Now, while most of the talk about Labour's manifesto yesterday was focused on the economy and tax, we're now paying attention to the constitutional elements, because hidden in its pages are several radical overhauls of the British Constitution that have alarmed, switched-on legal experts. Proposals include axing the House of Lords, more power for mayors, and a modernisation committee, whatever that is. Well, let's find out. I'm now joined by, by the barrister and the writer at The Spectator, Stephen Barris, and a great friend of the show and a superb scholar. Stephen, this is alarming stuff. The devil is always in the detail. We were obsessed with the tax, with the economics. And yet, when you delve deeper, Stephen, there are some pretty serious overhauls here of the British Constitution, starting with the Lords and going further. This, I know, concerns you. Share with us why. Well, I don't think I can endorse or condemn this because that, that's a political action. But I think I should explain what the effects of it will be. And the first thing I want your viewers to know is that this is really a continuation of the post-1997 plan. This is very much Gordon Brown's vision. And there is a saying in politics, which is, beware an old man in a hurry. And it does look as though he's managed to convince Sakia to put into the manifesto all of his um, uh, ideas. They are chaotic. That's a statement of fact. They, this will create chaos. I don't think that can be doubted. That, that's not a subjective uh, opinion. It's, it's moving power from the centre to all sorts of random places where they can then clash. I mean, you mentioned mayors. Why should a future Labour mayor be able to veto an act of parliament that a Conservative government wants to pass? Why should a future Conservative mayor be able to veto an act of parliament that a duly elected Labour government wants to pass? They, they are once again reaching for my, um, my truly, the one thing in life that I suppose it is obvious I loathe, which is, which is politicising the courts. So they're intending to drag the poor judges into this and make them part of, of this politicised nonsense. But really, it's just utter chaos. No one will know who is in charge. So nothing will be able to change. And to be honest, Martin, it's very difficult to avoid the fact that that is the point of all of this. Mm. I actually had a private conversation with somebody who's on the team and he admitted this is what they call entrenchment, which is uh, the technical term for meaning that nothing ever changes. If you engage in entrenchment, you will bring the entire system down. OK, this is what happened in Germany before Hitler. They, they, the two parties turned into effectively one party. There was no way that, and it, so it didn't matter who you voted for, there was no effective way to get change. So there was an angry shouty man, and although he was an angry shouty man and a bit odd, so enough of the German voters decided to give him a go, and that's how the whole thing kicked off. If you, if you entrench, and our constitution knows this, by the way, our constitution is designed to stop entrenchment. Realistically, they ought, the people doing this ought to know what entrenchment causes. But it, it's no different than leaving a pressure cooker on forever eventually the pressure cooker will explode. You know, if you, if you leave everything exactly the same, then the things that are problems will carry on being problems and they'll never get fixed. And if they never get fixed, they'll get worse. And as they get worse, people get more and more angry, more and more upset. And this is when human societies collapse. You know, they're, they're walking around with the self-professed belief that they are experts and geniuses. They, they think that they're Plato's philosopher princes and that they're going to fix everything and create utopia. And I'm afraid, Martin, all they're going to do is bring the entire thing crashing down. It's just, it's not rocket science, this. This is what happens if people can't get to change. OK, Stephen, may I ask you a question? Say, for example, if we were to do something or attempt to do something again like Brexit... Um, a referendum where the government, the powers that be, didn't like the outcome. Would this new framework make it even easier to stymie the will of the people? Yes, and the government won't matter. The powers that be will be the people on the moral and ethics committee. It will be the people on the on the you know all these subcommittees. The, the non-elected will have power everything over everything. This is this is a, a politicized civil servants' dream. I mean, this is this is total domination over over us all. It's actually characterized in constitutional terms as a weak dictatorship. And I just I don't want to alarm anybody or appear as an alarmist. But if you create a weak dictatorship, they, which is what you got immediately in, in France after the, the revolution or what you got before Stalin sort of killed everybody and rose to power, you, you, you get a period where there's a bureaucracy in charge. They tend to bicker and fight with each other. And eventually a strong man comes along and says, we're not having this anymore. I'm in charge. 
And that, that, is, you know, that is a well-trodden human path. This is not alarmist. This is what humans do. The one shining light, Martin, is that I think our constitution genuinely cannot have entrenchment. So if you got in a government afterwards, it could use acts of parliament to remove all of this, all of this nonsense. They're trying to invent an idea called constitutional statutes, which the Supreme Court has just said we don't have, and we don't have them. So they'll have to invent them via an act of parliament. We'll repeal that one. Now, Tim Stanley made a very good point, which is that it's all well and good me telling a future government that this is possible as law. What a future government will need is, is to, to, to coin a phrase, Martin, the, the, the cojones to actually do this. You know, they'll need the political will to do this. And, you know, Martin mentions the Equality Act, and he says that the Equality Act can't be repealed because they'll just go around saying that you hate equality. Well, if that's the state of British society that was so infantilized that anybody wanting to repeal a, a frankly dodgy or not that terribly well-working Act of Parliament just because it's called something nice. I mean, if we if we pass an act of parliament saying firstborn children can, can be murdered, but we call it the Fluffy Bunny and Kittens Act, is it truly that we won't be in a position to repeal it? We need to, you know, they will require political will, upon which I will okay. always remain silent. But I will say as law, this stuff can be got rid of if they do it.